This is a representation of some of the different kinds of sources that you might um, find uh, in the world. Um, and in terms of what we have at the at the library at the uh, at a at uh, an academic library, um, the, the the core of our collection is really the academic sources, and that's the academic journals um, and the academic journal articles that they contain, and then uh, books. Um, whether in electronic format or print, and uh, but particularly the the academic uh, books. So the scholarly books um, written by scholars, um, scholarly experts, and then very often published by a university press or, or a press that specializes in publishing scholarly materials. And where do you find these? Well, these days um, you find these uh, this material in terms of the journals in particular in, in databases. So we have uh, databases of academic journals uh, and the academic journal articles that they contain. And um, But we also have databases of other material. We have databases of uh, trade and popular journals. We also have databases of, of newspapers. Um, so that's a good thing to remember. Um, yes, the academic sources are the, the core of our collection, uh, but we do have um, we do have other uh, types of material as well uh, that might come in handy um, over the course of your studies and uh, of your research. So some questions that you can ask uh, about these sources is um, how do I tell what's what? So that can be a little bit um, tricky in a digital environment. Um, you know, Knowing what an academic journal is, uh, what its features are, um, when you're online, and it might just look like, a, you know, a website or a blog or or, or whatever. Uh, so how do you how do you tell the difference between these things? Um, and when is it appropriate to use a particular source in the context of the work um, that you're doing? So you know, in your everyday life, it's probably entirely appropriate to use websites for you know all kinds of of, of things that you do. Um, and they're not completely irrelevant in the context of scholarly work, but it's 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 likely that it's um, you know websites or or, or social media um, are going to be places to start your research, and um, but the bulk of your, your sort of your thinking um, and of the the kind of thoughtful writing that you do, the analysis uh, is going to be engaged with the the scholarship, um, and that's what's there in those academic journals uh, or the the scholarly books. So we can, it, you know, it's, it, it can be useful to make comparisons between different sources. So um, here we have a kind of a typology of, of sources and there at the bottom is the scholarly journals. And so we can think about some of the similarities or differences between scholarly journals and, and other kinds of publications. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they're a special kind of resource um, and they're distinct from something like a newspaper or a magazine in that, for example, they go through a process of peer review. So in other words, um, when you're a scholar, you know, you really, really, really want to publish stuff. And um, what that means is you want to circulate the knowledge that you've, that you've created uh, to, uh, the, to, to the broader community of scholars. Uh, and you do that by means of, of uh, of a scholarly journal, but it has to go through a peer review process. That's what makes it really special in terms of how um, of how authoritative the, the the information is. So, in other words, you you write something up, and then it will go off. You send it to a publisher, and the publisher will send it off to somewhere between two and five uh, other scholars to go over um, uh, before um, uh, and make sure it's it's up to snuff before it, before um, before it actually gets published. So, uh, that's that's what makes uh, them unique, uh, but on the other hand, they are periodicals, much like a newspaper or or, or a magazine, and um, and in that sense, they full they fulfill a similar sort of function. They're they're bringing um, the most current information about uh, something uh, to the community that is interested in in, in whatever it is. So um, so a newspaper. Uh, keeps you up to date on on you know the nation's affairs for example um, a scholarly journal will will keep other scholars up to date on 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 the latest uh, knowledge that's being produced in you know in the field of chemistry or, or whatever it is um, 
Another way of thinking about sources is to uh, think about it in terms of, of, of a timeline, in terms of what, what sources come out when, uh, you know, say we're thinking about some kind of an event that happens. We could say Brexit or we could say the coronavirus, for example. Um, you know, we start to get information about something that happens um, very quickly over things like the Internet and television and radio. And that's information that's really raw. Um, and, you know, it often doesn't go through any kind of a, a quality control process. So this is where, you know, we get this proliferation of things like fake news. Um, even though there is there is accurate information in there, it can be hard to figure out what is true and what's not in this sort of you know, this great belch of information that comes out uh, immediately after something happens, some kind of an event. Uh, and then maybe the day or so afterwards, we'll get newspaper articles about it. And um, information that goes into a newspaper article will be you know, be vetted by an editor. Uh, so it does go through a kind of, of editorial process and thus it makes it you know, somewhat more trustworthy. Um, and then maybe a week or so after the event, it'll go th get into popular magazines and then more sort of uh, in-depth uh, uh, you know, research will be undertaken. It will make it into news or trade magazines. And only the year or two after something like this happens, typically do things uh, make it into the, the academic journals, although things are getting a little bit faster that way. So, um, um, you know, uh, there was uh, research being published again about, about COVID-19, um, you know, within weeks or months afterwards. But, you know, still, um, you know, not as fast as your, as your newspaper articles are coming out, for example. And then eventually it might make its way into, into a book. And then, and then, you know, after a very long time, it'll sort of distill itself into an encyclopedia uh, article, uh, perhaps. So we can see here's that process um, with reference to, to Brexit. So we've got over to the left, uh, you, know, t you know, TV, uh, uh, you know, as it happens, basically. Um, and then into your newspapers, and then your magazines, and then your scholarly articles, uh, and then eventually a book. And again, another way of thinking about sources is this proximity to the subject of study. And, um, and one of the issues with a lot of, of, of again, web material, websites, um, but also Wikipedia uh, as an encyclopedia. Uh, is that it's it's this is all information that's very distant from the subject of study. So, um, so the stuff that's close to the subject of study is the data itself. So if you're you know working in a lab and you're you're collecting data about you know some kind of uh, phenomenon, uh, you're doing tests and you're you, you know you're getting that data down. Um, that's the sort of the primary information. And then the the write up that you that you that you do about that, the analysis in the form of a, a you know a scholarly article or similar is the secondary information. And it's in those two circles there, the primary and the secondary circles that you really want to be working with the most um, as, a, as a third level student. Um, that tertiary zone, you know, once it gets out there, it gets quite distant from the subject of study. Um, and again, this is a place where you can be, you know, starting your research, um, starting to think through a, a topic for, for, you know, for, for something you want to write about. Um, but you need to get deep into um, the, the primary and the secondary sources eventually. Um, that's what you're going to be engaging with for the most part in, uh, you know, for example, you know, a, a research paper or, or whatever it is that you're working on. So, um, and this is just kind of a representation of the workflow, basically the academic workflow. And so again, you've got your scholars, they might be working in a lab, they might be doing field work, they might be studying literature, whatever it is that they're doing. Um, no matter who you are, no matter what type of a scholar you are, you're really, really quite interested in, in publishing uh, in, a, in, a, in a journal. Um, and um, so you want to do that uh, in order to circulate the, the knowledge that you've created out to other scholars. Uh, it goes through a peer review process uh, as a part of that, and then, but then eventually has to go somewhere. And it used to be that um, the journals would go up on library shelves and, um, you know, as print material. But now every, pretty much everything is electronic, uh, particularly when it comes to journals. And um, so it, needs to be, it still needs to be stored somewhere. And that's where they go into the databases. Uh, and then sort of search layers go on top of those um, uh, search and discovery so that people can, can find what it is that they're looking for. 